powerful scriptures that I know personally. Later on, we're going to see we have the spirit of adoption from our Heavenly Father that we can cry, Abba, Abba Father. So, and this is uh, 36 verses. We're doing 17, but let's get ready from the archives, from the scripture song, Vault of Antiquities. <laughs> there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are this is verse 1 and verse 2 come on get it with me and there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ come on learn it with me if it's brand new to you and there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are, give us the full truth of the revelation of it today, Lord. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death for the law of the spirit my God of life in Christ Jesus has set me free but from the law of sin and death I'm sure there's a few people that remember this song I think it was probably mid or later 80s that it came out but I want to see the hearts and thumbs flying today guys if you know this song, or let's put it this way, if you're just totally getting this scripture, verse 1 and 2, Romans 8, if you're just jumping on the stream, there is therefore, comma, now no condemnation. Oh my God, this is a huge thing in our lives, don't you think, you guys? Condemnation before and even after you meet the Lord, the enemy, the accuser of the brethren is trying to condemn you. Condemn you right out of your sonship with God or your daughtership with God. He, the accuser of the brethren is pointing the finger, trying to not knock this freedom and liberty that we got in Christ out of you by condemning you into the ground. Ain't no way, not gonna work because the scripture said, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's a beautiful thing, man. And there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. set me free from the law of sin and death for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and Oh, 
condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Sons and daughters of God, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the love of sin and by the Holy Spirit there is therefore now no condemnation or those who are in Christ to the Probably the third one should be late 80s that it came out. Because I did All Hail King Jesus 85. You sure it wasn't on All Hail King Jesus? It might have been. Well, be, the earliest would be 1985. And then I did uh, Glorify, Glorify Thy Name. Name in 86, just a year later, because Ron Tucker moved out of that slot. And then In His Presence was two years after that. But can you imagine, this is what we were singing the scripture. It's just a good point to make. We're going to do some worship with Great Are Your Lord, which is, by the way, the authors of this is a group called All Sons and Daughters, which is what we're going to see in Romans 8. I didn't realize it till we started this dream, and I'm looking at the lyrics over here, but imagine it, the power of the light of his revelation, a born again, a brand new born again believer saying, I'm not condemned anymore. Wow, we'll, we'll get into it in the narration, but. I'm not condemned because I really feel like I had that a spirit of condemnation condemnation on me even as a teenager before I met the Lord and before I was spirit filled everything nothing was good enough and if, if you go back to it psychologically and constantly you'll find people either one of their parents it was never good enough or both of them which is really sad <laughs> but it's like a spirit of condemnation from the enemy it's not just comes on its own 
self-doubting or un self unbelief on your own life. But God dealt with, thank God, hearts and thumbs flying people, no more spirit of condemnation. Thank God. And here's what our great are your Lord. This is who he is and what he does. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the utter darkness, Lord. has been broken. Great are you, Lord. Somebody help me out. Everybody join up. Let's go now. Yeah. to the nations our hearts cry out and these bones will sing 
praise, Lord, because we can. It's still the land of the free, the home of the brave, a free country, a beacon of freedom to every other nation, America. We're Americans by and large. Other nations are on watching, but we thank you, Lord. We're still free, men and women, teenagers, millennials, to send you the gospel of salvation and peace with God around the world. So just for a minute, we hold up our nation before the throne of grace. Bring your great awakening. Bring your great awakening. There's revival in this American land. outpouring of your Holy Spirit in the land of America, we pray. Oh, we sing and we pray over America. We sing and we pray over America, revival in this land. Great awakening by your powerful holy hand all over America. Revival, pray and release it right now. Yeah. Revival in this land, Lord. Great awakening by the power of your heart and your hand, Jesus. Great awakening in America. Come on, keep singing, keep praying. Pray in the spirit if you got a prayer language. Pray in your native tongue for the glory of God. Yeah, 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 and include your nation today. If you're seeing this from another nation, revival in the land. Oh, revival in this land. Yeah, revival in this land by your heart and your hand. Revival in this land. Keep going. Keep going just for another couple minutes. Revival in the land. By the power of your word, by the powerful release of your Holy Spirit, we've seen it and we've heard it in the book of Acts. We've seen and heard it in the book of Acts. A revival, great awakening. We've seen it and heard it in the book of Acts, Lord. Send it to every nation once. Let us have our own little mini book of Acts. A form of the book of Acts in every state and county of America. Every state and county, Lord, we say yes. We say yes to revival in the land. 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 And heal and touch our nation again, Lord. This is our simple little four or five minute prayer time singing and praying the word of God all over America every state, every county every city for your glory somebody out there say yes Lord I want to see the hearts and thumbs flying revival is in this land prophesy but proclaim and decree it in the name of Jesus Romans 8, get ready for some of the most powerful stuff you've ever seen. Now, many of you have been in the Word for years, but if you're new, wow, this is so, there's some notes in here, to, there's some memorization of Scripture that we need to do. Carla Ray, start it up. Well, this is one of my favorite Scriptures in the whole Bible. And uh, in case you didn't know, chapter and verse are not necessarily inspired. And so this is coming out of the end of chapter 7 that we talked about That's yesterday. Right. That's right. Where Paul says, Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this dilemma? For the things I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, I do. But then he goes on to say, Thank God, through Jesus Christ. Right. Which leads us into Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore... Now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, 
but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. This is the highlighted scripture we're going to be looking at tonight. And it says in the Passion, So now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the Anointed One. For the law of the Spirit of life supersedes the laws that are on this earth, supersedes any law. And it's, the, it's in the spirit. It's the law that's in the spirit of life, which we partake of now because of Jesus. Flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. And Joseph Benson commentary says, Paul now comes to speak of deliverance and freedom and liberty. Deliverance and liberty in opposition to this state of guilt and bondage described in the latter part of chapter 7, which Carla just spoke to. Resuming the thread of his discourse to them which are in Christ Jesus, who are united to Christ. And the old timers use this phrase, by a lively faith that is a current lively faith in him, the Lord Jesus. They're also united to the truths and promises of his gospel. He says two different things here, this commentator. He said, resuming the thread of his discourse, Paul to them which are in Christ, who are united by a lively faith in him and also united to the truths and promises of his gospel and the power of it. And so we are made members of his mystical body. It's called the body of Christ. Isn't that cool, man? So we're made members of his mystical body, the body of Christ. For the law of the spirit of life that is in the doctrine of divine grace in the gospel is accompanied by the quickening, commanding influence of the Holy Spirit. Hear this again. For the law of the Spirit of life, that is the doctrine of divine grace in the gospel, it's accompanied by the quickening, commanding influence of the Holy Spirit. This has made me free from the law of sin and death. The quickening, commanding influence of the Holy Spirit. And then he finishes with this paragraph. In other words, the Spirit of Christ giving me a new life is now another law. It's a higher law, and it's the rule of my actions. Freeing me from the motions and the powers of sin to which I was subject under the Mosaic law, and then from the death to which that law subjected me for the gospel attended with the Holy Spirit has worked this freedom in me. The, attend, the attending Holy Spirit has wrought or worked this certain freedom in me and my life. Hallelujah. Verse 1. That's what God meant when he said he was going to write his law on our hearts. Oh. Romans 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I think this is how we're going to see miracles. Wow. You want to see miracles? This is how we'll see miracles. No condemnation now hangs over the head of those who are in Jesus Christ. For the new spiritual principle of life in Christ lifts me out of the old vicious circle of sin and death. 
the Amplified says, there is now no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. Amazing. And the Passion says, so now the case is closed. Your case is closed. There remains no accusing voice wow. of condemnation against oh those God. who are joined in life union with Jesus, the Anointed One. Okay. For the law of the Spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. The Spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus wow. has liberated us from the law of sin and death. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against you. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against you. You are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. You're joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one, and there remains no accusing voice of condemnation against you. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against you, because you are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one, the spirit of life flowing through you. The spirit of life is now flowing through you. Yes, the spirit of life is flowing through you. The anointing of Jesus has liberated us. We are free in Jesus. Yeah. We are free in Jesus and we're set free, liberated from the law of sin and death. We are liberated, free in Jesus. We are liberated. Come on, man. Those hearts and thumbs. I want to see them flying. You got in this. Oh, we're not leaving this spot in the road. This is very powerful. We're liberated in Christ Jesus. Set free. Liberated in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life is flowing through your veins. For the law of the spirit of life is flowing through the anointing of Jesus the anointing of Jesus the spirit of life flowing through man I, we could just spend an hour right here couldn't we for it says the law of the spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and what the law could not do and that it was weak through our flesh God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh let's go slow on this man we can't just jump over the, oh my god for what the law could not do and that it was so weak through our human flesh God did by sending his own son Jesus in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemns sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but we're walking now according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh. But those of us who live according to the Spirit, we set our minds on the things of the Spirit. For God achieved what the law was able to accomplish because the law was limited by the weakness of human nature. Wow. Yet God sent His Son in human form to identify 
with his human weakness. He was clothed with humility. He was clothed with humility. He was clothed with humanity. A human being suit. God's son gave his body to be the sin offering. Thank you, Lord. So that God could once and for all condemn the guilt and the power of sin, which he did in Jesus. He once for all condemned. So now, every righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one living his life in us and through us. We are free to live free to live, not according to the flesh, but by the power, the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Those who motivated, who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what, pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities, that is, the things the Holy Spirit, and this marks my life, because I follow, I tell people, follow the impulses of the Holy Spirit. By the impulses of the Holy Spirit, we pursue the things of the Holy Ghost. By the impulses of the Holy Spirit, we're motivated, we pursue spiritual realities, the things of the Spirit, we pursue spiritual realities that is the things of the Holy Spirit we pursue these daily the things of the Holy Spirit we pursue every day Lord we pursue the spiritual realities the impulses of the Holy Spirit we obey we obey. We know the things of the Holy Spirit who search the deep things of the Father's heart. Things of the Holy Spirit who knows the deepest things of our Abba Father's heart. The things of the Holy Spirit. Spiritual reality. Isn't that powerful? Yes, Lord. Yes, it is. Six, seven, and eight. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity. It has animosity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But the mind of the flesh is death, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace, the spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God, both now and forever. The carnal, the carnal attitude sees no further than natural things, but the spiritual attitude wow. reaches out after yes. the things of the spirit. The former attitude means bluntly death. The latter means life and inward peace. And this is only to be expected for the carnal attitude is inevitably opposed to the purpose of God, and neither can nor will follow his laws for living. Men who hold this attitude cannot possibly please God. Wow, wow. And the Passion says, For the sense and reason of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the Spirit finds wow. life and yes. peace. In fact, the mindset focused on the flesh fights against, fights God's plan and refuses to submit to his direction because it cannot. For no matter how hard they try, God finds no pleasure with those who are controlled by the flesh. 
flesh, but you're in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, how plain, factual, and simple can it be? But you're not in the flesh, not anymore. But you're in the Holy Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of of God dwells within you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. Verse 10, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Man. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells within you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Well, this is why giant healings are always possible. Some people say, well, you know, Jesus takes care of my spirit. But I don't know if I get a sickness. No, no. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies. Amen. Period. Through the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. I said that our nature is dead in the presence of Christ. This is a J.B. Phillips translation. He said, I I said that our nature is dead. In the presence of Christ, that's gone. And so it is because of its sin. Nevertheless, once the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives within you, he will, by that same spirit, bring to you your whole being, get this now, new strength and vitality. New strength and vitality. See, if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives within you, he will, by that same spirit, bring to your whole being, your spirit, your soul, your body, your whole person, new strength and vitality. I love that. I can't get over it. So we have new strength and new vitality. When Christ, when the spirit of Christ empowers your life you've got new strength and vitality a 
do the passion in a minute. But when the Spirit of Christ, check this, empowers your life, you've got new strength and vitality. As the Spirit of Christ, when the Spirit of Christ empowers your life, you've got new strength and vitality. Somebody say amen out there. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, when the Spirit of Christ empowers your life, you've got new strength and vitality in Him. New strength and vitality in Jesus. I've got a new strength and vitality by the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. New strength. New vitality. What was it? I said, I want everyone to know a new strength and new vitality to run the race to the very end. A new strength and new vitality. I'm a marathon runner running my race to the very end. Sing it out. Come on, I've got, well, new strength and new vitality. I'm running my race to the end. New strength and new vitality because it's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Now let me finish the passion in verses 9, 10. But when the Spirit of Christ empowers your life, you are not dominated by the flesh, but by the Spirit. What? You're not dominated by the flesh anymore, but by the Holy Spirit. And if you're not joined to the Spirit of the Anointed One, you're not of Him. Whoa, okay. Verse 10, passion. Now Christ lives His life in you. Get this. Christ lives his life in you. And even though your body may be dead because of the effects of sin, his life-giving spirit imparts life to you. Whoa. Now, Christ who lives in you, his life-giving spirit imparts life to you every day because you're fully accepted by God the Father. He continues on imparting life to you every day because you're fully accepted in the beloved. (laughs) Verse 11, yes, God raised Jesus to life. And since God's spirit of resurrection lives in you, don't miss it. And since God's spirit of resurrection, let's capitalize, lives in you, he will also raise your dying body to life. By the same Spirit breathes life into you, Carla. Guys, we saw that so many young people get set free from patterns of sin right. when we were taught this back in the mid 70s. So many light bulbs went on. We became Southerners, said to each other, I reckon. <laughs> I reckon myself dead to sin. Verse 12. <laughs> 13 and 14. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Wow. I'm going to say that again. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So then, my brothers, you can see that we have no particular reason to feel grateful to our sensual nature or to live life on the level of the instincts. Indeed, that way of living leads to certain spiritual death. But if, on the other hand, you cut the nerve of your instinctive actions by obeying the Spirit, (laughs) you are on the way to real 
living. Christ is within. Follow the lead of his spirit. Wow. Yes. All who follow the leading of God's spirit are God's own sons. Yes. So then, beloved ones, the flesh has no claim on us at all. And we have no further obligation to live in obedience to it. Thank God. For when you live controlled by the flesh, you are about to die. But if the life of the spirit puts to death the corrupt ways of the flesh, we then taste his abundant life. His abundant life. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. Christ is within. Father, the lead of his spirit then. Christ is within. Father, the lead of his spirit then. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons and daughters of God. As many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. I love it. Thank you, Lord. Well, those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons daughters of the Lord, those who are led by the Spirit of God, sons and daughters, sons and daughters, oh, those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of the Lord, oh, well, those who are led by the Spirit of God. All our sons and daughters, yeah. those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and the daughters of the Most High. Those who are led by the Spirit of the Lord are all sons and daughters. Yeah. We taste your abundant life. Even right now we're tasting your, your abundant life. We are tasting, Lord, the provision and the greatness of your abundant life. So good, so powerful, so real. Verse 15, it was so important to me. We're only going through verse 17 because we have to split this chapter. It's so long, Romans 8. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received, I could burst into tears, the spirit of adoption. You have received, wow, the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, 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 Heavenly Father. You've received the spirit of adoption nor are you meant to relapse into the old slavish attitude of fear. Hear this. You're not meant to relapse into the old slavish attitude of fear. You've been adopted into the very family circle of God. What a translation. We have, you guys, we've been adopted into the very family circle of God. What a phrase. We should behave like God's very own children. For he adopted us into the bosom of his family. Th that's the living Bible. He, he did what? He adopted us into the very heart of his family, into the very bosom of his family. So we were calling to him, Father, 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 Father. And you can say it with a totally full heart. Father, my Father. Yes, yeah, say it out loud with a, an absolutely full heart. Father, my Father, I call to you. For you have not received the spirit of slavery, leading again to fear of these things, the fear of God's judgment and the penalty of your sin, Amplified Bible. 
It's not leading to fear of God's judgment ever again because you've received the spirit of adoption as sons. This is the spirit that produces sonship in your heart. Wow. I remember my first year or two of being spirit-filled. It had been 74 and 75. Carla and I met at our first charismatic church. And the Lord kept speaking to me about sonship. Sonship. And I didn't even know what it meant. I was like 20, 21 years old. I go, what? Because I didn't learn sonship from my earthly father. He didn't really pay that much attention. He wasn't a bad man, but he said, I've adopted you as my son. So that this Holy Spirit produces the whole concept and the understanding of sonship being his son and daughter by which we joyfully cry out Abba Abba when I was in Jerusalem the first time we were out they said just take an hour and go out and buy some stuff the vendors in Jerusalem and the little boy got lost it was just cut off from his father and all the traffic in front of all the shops and I heard him going down the street Abba Abba we say Abba but he, he was going Abba and then Six or seven times it stopped because he found his dad. <laughs> and Abba, this word is an Aramaic word, not a Greek word. It's used by young children when addressing their fathers. But the note from the Amplified says, it's not used by the Jewish people in prayer. Check this now because it implies a sense of familiarity. Wow, that's what we want. I want to be a friend with God and Jesus. Jesus used this word, Abba, emphasized. He was emphasizing his father-son relationship with the living God. Isn't that cool? And then the passion finishes. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty. Somebody say amen. <laughs> we did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of, check this, but never being good enough. You're not going back into the fear of never being good enough, but you've received the spirit of full acceptance enfolding you. He enfolded you into his family. What? You received the spirit of full acceptance in the beloved, and he enfolded you into the family of God. So you'll never feel orphaned, for as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying, the, these words with tender affliction, affection, not affliction. That's what I had in the world. In saying the words, the words of tender affection, beloved Father, beloved Father, beloved Father, Spirit of adoption, Spirit of acceptance, beloved Father, we cry out, Spirit of adoption. We've been fully accepted. Be loving. Oh, man, the hearts and thumbs should be flying. I want to see 50 of them flying by in front of me, you guys. Come on. Spirit of adoption. Be loving, Father. Be loving, Father. Spirit of adoption. Fully accepted. Oh, be loving, Father. Abba, Father. Spirit of adoption. Spirit of full acceptance, I am my beloved, and he is my beloved father. Well, just in time you say, my life, I am my beloved, and he is my beloved father. You say, my life at just the right time, beloved father, be, I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm accepted, fully accepted. I am my beloved, and he is mine. Fully accepted. You saved me at just the right time, Lord. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Our beloved Abba, Heavenly Father. Uh, verses 16 and 17, people. The Woo! Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, 
that we may also be glorified together. Jesus, thank you, Lord. The Spirit himself endorses our inward conviction that we really are the children of God. Wow. Think what that means. If we are his children, we share his treasures. And all that Christ claims as his will belong to all of us as well. Yes, we share in his suffering. We shall certainly share in his glory. For if Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us that we really are God's children, and since we are his children, we will share his treasures. Wow. For all wow. God gives to his son Jesus is now ours too. Wow. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. Since we are his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures. For indeed, we are heirs of God himself. Since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that he is and all that he has. We will experience being co-glorified with him, provided that we accept his sufferings as our own. And Father, we pray. I'm going to sing my prayer. Give us full light revelation for this Romans 8, Lord. As we get toward the end of our stream, we, we pray, give us full light, heart revelation, L-I-G-H-T, the light of heaven. We want the fullness of your divine revelation concerning the scripture, Lord. We're here before you. Our hearts engaged. We're here before you, Lord. For saving us from the grave, now sons and daughters. I like this phrase. We are sharing in the treasures of the Son of God. Deep in our hearts, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Deep in our hearts. Tells us we are really the children of God, children of God, drafted and folded into his family. For the Holy Spirit speaks to us, oh, the Holy Spirit's been speaking deep in our hearts and tells us. We are really the sons and daughters, children of God. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is speaking deep in our hearts and tells us that we are really the children of God, sharing in the treasure. of 
the treasures of heaven and here we are here we are wow here we are 17 verses of Romans 8 wow so powerful you know when I start getting beyond words I, I can just sing and vocalize but I go Lord I, I, I mean I'm so blown away by the truth that's revealed here in Romans 8 I'm just sitting here saying, Lord, I, I hope you, I hope I sing some good stuff today before the stream. Because, I mean, I'm so blown away. We could just do musical interludes, Selah, S E L A H, from the book of Psalms, Selah. Just let the music play and let's think about it and meditate on it because it's really good. <laughs> Man, I'm blessed. I'm really blessed today. And onward and upward, we'll do part two on Thursday. Wow. Let's, let's stay fired up. I like that part, you know, 17 minutes ago, I'm singing the marathon runner. <laughs> We're empowered by his life and the Holy Spirit. The marathon runner wins the race. Let's remember that. Man, all, all the little speedsters. I was really fast when I was younger. I stole bases in ba baseball, played basketball, but... Listen, man, it's the marathon runner. It's the tortoise and the hare, the little child's fable. But we are marathon runners, and we're empowered by the, by the power of the Holy Spirit to last and go the distance. We're going the distance in Jesus' name. Well, we love you guys. Great things are happening in the Spirit. Um, maybe Thursday or by next week, I'll tell you about a powerful opportunity that's been presented to us um, to really just kind of touch um, everyday believers or marginal believers or people that are not, not saved. <laughs> the whole worship leading gift could be flowing right into the marketplace. So let's be praying about it. I'm very grateful, uh, you know, that we, we have this perseverance in the Lord and good things are happening every day. All right, we love you. We'll see you Thursday or tomorrow night, but Thursday with the Book of Romans, so be 4 p.m. All right, God bless you guys. See you.